into this. All right, there we go. Um, so I got to do the level three, USA track and field level three, um, IAAF, which is now World Athletics level five. And I got to do that not this past December, but I guess December 2018. And that was, that's probably the best coaches education I've ever been to just in terms of, I mean, you're, sur you're surrounded by elite, elite coaches. Tin Man was one of them, but we had people from different national teams there, colleges there. And so there were other, a few other high school coaches as well. But, um, you know, learning from some of the top names in the field, which was pretty cool. And uh, I'm also uh, the 7A cross country rep and then also the cross country committee co-chair and then our girls um, they just won cross country they won state championship this past year which is the first in school history not only for cross country but for our school in general so no team had ever won um, at our school and so that was kind of a big accomplishment for us and I I don't owe it all in part to final surge but uh, I think tracking the mileage and keeping up with that was just one piece of the overall puzzle I think that just kind of helped elevate our program um, to the next level. Here, if, if you want to uh, just take a picture of this, most of you have been in contact with me, so you know how to contact me, but we're on Twitter and Instagram. So there's our email, that my email address, that's, I kind of run that. So if you ever need to reach out or you got questions or just want to talk training, I'm always up to talk, talk running um, and talk training. So that's just the different ways um, you can kind of, um, reach out to me. So kind of going into last time, why track mileage, I guess. Uh, so six years at Hillgrove this past year in cross country was the first year we actually started tracking mileage. And for me, so I think of the question, why not track your mileage? For me, the main argument or the main, the main thing for me is just like, well, that's going to take time. Like I'm going to have to, if I'm going to make them track the mileage, I'm going to have to spend time at some point looking at it and logging it and keeping track of it. So for me, it was, I just kind of talked myself out of it. And then talking to um, a good a coaching friend, uh, Coach Coleman over at Marietta, just at a track meet, I think last track season, we we're just kind of talking in between races. And he was talking about when they started, he noticed his program kind of took a step to the next level when they started tracking their mileage and for, for many different reasons. But, you know, I was trying to get out of him. What's the trick to not spending a lot of time at it? He's like, there is no trick. He's like, I sit for a couple hours every Sunday and I check their mileage every week. And so, you know, I'm always trying to learn from uh, more experienced coaches and coaches that, that have success. And so, you know, that's just kind of one thing I got from him. And that, that's just one thing that helped convince me to kind of start tracking it. Accountability is big, especially right now. You know, we're thinking like we can't meet with our athletes. We can't hold practice. We can't condition none of that. So for me, this is like the one main way that I can make sure that they're actually um, running now. I understand kids can log mileage that they didn't run. And I've dealt with that most of the time, you know, I've had some of my JV boys, they'll say they, they ran six miles or five miles, even in 30 minutes on a recovery day. And I was like, Hey, you, you didn't run that. Um, so I'll be like our number one, but like Noah didn't even run that. So I know you didn't run that. So after I've talked to them, you know, it takes a couple of times maybe, but after that, they, are a lot more honest. Once they see that, hey, I'm looking at it, they're a lot more honest in the mileage they're logging. And so it just holds them accountable. Um, the graphics that you see over here, uh, you can't make cool graphics. Uh, I mean, I think they're kind of cool. Some people could probably design better ones, but you can't make those if you don't have the data to plug in. And so this is one reason why I track it is to kind of um, advertise our team. And, you know, I want to get our brand, Hillgrove Cross Country, I want to get our brand out there as much as I can. And so one way that we can do this is hopefully just putting together some different graphics and different things to post um, related to what's important to us. And when you look at what's important to us, you can kind of see on this graphic here, um, if you followed us for any amount of time, you'll know we have two hashtags um, consistent to great and collective momentum. Um, the kids roll their eyes when we talk about it. 
Um, when I talk about it, they roll their eyes, but I would guarantee there's not one kid on our team that couldn't, couldn't explain it. They all can explain what it means. They know what it means. And, you know, it, it kind of will turn into like an eye roll thing, but like when it gets down to it and you hear them talk to, you know, some of your varsity kids, when you hear them, you know, they get to the level where they experience some success and they're talking to the newspaper or Miles Split wants to interview them, stuff like that. And you start hearing them repeat these things that we're trying to instill. That's when you know, like, okay, it's sticking. And so like consistent to great, like I said last time for us, uh, consistent work over an extended period of time will result in improvement. And so what we preach to our kids is that we, we don't care that you had one or two great weeks over the summer. Like, oh, if you hit 50 miles this week, but then you're at 30 the next week and you hit 21 week and then you're back up to 50, right? You might have a kid log five or 600 miles over a summer, but we're more concerned with um, consistent. So I'd much rather have a kid, maybe they log 100 miles less than another kid, but I'd rather see a consistent 35 to 40 miles per week every single week over the summer. And so that's kind of what consistent to great um, kind of adds up or is for us. And then collective momentum is just more of the team aspect where um, you build, you know, going back to physics, you build momentum. It's a lot easier to build momentum if we're moving together. And I always explain to them, hey, if we're trying to move this huge boulder, if we're all working together, pushing in the same direction, we're going to get it going a lot quicker. And once we get it going, it's going to be a lot harder to stop. And so just kind of that idea that if we consistently work together, we're going to, you know, when we look back in a year, two years, and it's been cool this year, I've I had some talented seniors come or freshman girls come in and they were seniors this year and just being able to win state, letting them look back on, you know, their four year career and just seeing where the program started and where it ended. Um, it's cool for them to see all of their work pay off. And so that's, I like to track mileage because I like to make graphics and I like to make posts because I think that just builds the team culture. So like you can look at like summer training, we can look at that and we can see, Hey, it wasn't just me running over the summer. You know, I like to throw names on there kids, you know, so kind of get the kids names on there. They like seeing their names on posts, even here. Hey, look, you ran week one, but so did most of your teammates. So letting them see like, Hey, I'm not alone. Uh, and a big thing is as they buy into the program and they're in it, they might see like their teammate may get better because they log consistently over the summer and they didn't. So, you know, one year they're running with their friends, but then the next year all their friends got faster because their friends were working. And so uh, again, just building team culture, this is just one way that we build team culture. Not, hardly any of my kids are on Twitter. I, I'll post on Twitter, but that's more so just for like our school I was athletic account and for other coaches to see most of my kids are on Instagram. So these, I post the same thing on Twitter and Instagram, but again, it's just letting them see it and just getting like our culture and what we're about and hoping that, you know, other kids in the school see it and they say, Hey, that's something I want to be a part of. And so team culture is big for us. Um, injury, why track mileage? Cause if you get a kid that's injured, you can go back and look at their log and you can see, what's what's going on you can say hey we had like two or three weeks of abnormally high mileage and that might be why and so if you never track the mileage you you can't go back and look at that um or flip side let's say you track the mileage all summer and all season you're at the end of the season you can just have kids can go back and look at their log and they can just look at all the miles they ran and the workouts they did and they can kind of get confidence from that I look at college coaches, um, you know, we don't want, I mean, I'm not, I don't like pushing kids to run in college unless they want to, but I definitely want them to have that opportunity as with running, you know, there's a lot of opportunities at all levels for them to participate in cross country and track. I mean, I, I have a girl, um, she was just an at average JV girl, but she's running in college because she loves running. And so you know, you can't talk training with college coaches unless you've documented and looked at, you know, you've kept track of it. Um, so, I mean, in my short experience, uh, we've, over the past years, we've had more and more kids go off and run in college. Um, this, I would say maybe this year, this year might be the first, or no, well, 
couple of years ago, I had a girl, her uncle's actually the coach at the University of New Mexico, Joe Franklin. And so he was recruiting her and he called me to talk training. And then the UGA coach called me this past fall to talk about Grace and Noah. Other than that, I haven't really had a bunch of college coaches um, reach out to me, but I was able to give them very specific information in terms of training and mileage and paces and stuff based off, be, based off us tracking it. And then volume maintenance, this is one of the biggest things, the biggest changes we made last summer in our program. And is one reason why I think we saw more success is we shifted from like a 500 mile club or 600 mile club or 400 mile club over the summer. And I just put my kids in mileage groups. And so by miles per week, and it's like, hey, you're in the 40 mile per week group. So, hey, guess what? Your goal is to log 40 miles as close to 40 miles as you can every single week. And what I do is I look at keeping them in the same volume that they're going to hit during school. So I don't, I don't want them to go from hitting 50 miles per week every single week during the summer, and then they drop to 4, 35 or 40 once school starts because, you know, homework, they're not getting as much sleep. So their mileage drops. Well, when their mileage drops, their fitness drops. So you got a kid that's going to come into the season on fire, and then by the end of the season, they're barely holding on. And so Hillgrove, like, we were known as the team that, like, folded at state. And, I mean, you listen to some of the podcasts – Mile Split did one, Atlanta Track Club did one, and like no one gave us respect, which is fine um, because we hadn't earned it yet, but they were counting us out. And one of them said like, we haven't proven ourselves yet and we haven't proven that we can perform when it matters. And I 100% agree with them, but I think our state meet this past year um, for the girls was by, and the boys, even the boys, I mean, Noah was second in the state. But across the board, that was probably one of our best team races we ran all year. And I think part of that was because I looked at, I tracked their mileage every week and I made sure, especially my top seven to 10 boys and girls, I made sure that we maintained the mileage that we were hitting over the summer. So my girls, you know, if they were in, they were hitting 35, 40 miles a week, and I would talk to them, hey, you know, if we have a week that's a little bit lower, maybe 37 or 38, that's okay. If we have a week that's a little higher than 40, that's okay. But if we're, if we're hitting 40 miles per week, then we don't need to be going dropping down to 30 here and we need to keep that up. And again, we can talk training some other time, but if you look at our training, the girls that were hitting 40 miles per week in the summer, they hit 40 miles per week, the week of the state meet. Um, so again, keeping that volume up, at, at a consistent level kind of keeps their aerobic fitness up. If you're not tracking mileage, you have no clue um, where they're at. You don't know what they're doing and you can't kind of monitor that. Um, I put a star here because pretty much everything that I do comes back to these two ideas right here and how we're building culture and how am I creating the environment that I want to create. And again, tracking mileage is one tool that we use to help facilitate that. Um, so why final surge? Um, the biggest thing, it's user friendly for the athlete and the coach. Um, now, we have more time on our hands now, just do not being in school, not being at track meets. So we have more time now where we can experiment with stuff. But if you're like me, when we're teaching, like I teach AP, Kim, and then coaching. So it's like when we're teaching and coaching and we have families and we don't have time to sit there and learn something new, learn a new program. Um, the kids as well, I mean, you have your diehard kids who are gonna do whatever you ask, but a bulk of our team, they enjoy it, but they're, they don't love it and they're not you know, as dedicated maybe as other kids or as we are. So having a, a be user friendly for the coach and the athlete is huge. Um, you look here, these are the apps that you can link with Final Surge. And then these are kind of the apps and online websites that you can link with it. So super easy. If you link your Garmin account, it automatically uploads into your final surge account. Um, I wish more of my kids would do it. I don't force them to do it, but you could very easily, if you wanted to force them to sync it. And when they sync it, you get all that GPS data, heart rate, you get their cadence. Um, you, I mean, if their watch is doing stride length, you can get their um, distance, their miles each split. So like on a long run, they go out 10 to 12 miles. I can go back and see every single split. Um, and you can coach them a little bit better that way. And so super, super easy to use. 
Um, in terms of easy to use, I don't have to create a tutorial. I don't have to spend any time at practice or at all teaching them how to use Final Surge. They, I tell them, you, you need to download the app and they, get, they send me an email. I put their email address in Final Surge. It sends them an invite. They click the link, they create an account and then they download the app. And most of these kids have smartphones and they figure out how to log miles. Um, and it's, I've, again, I've, I've never had a kid who I've had to sit and teach how to log miles. And that, I, that's how easy I think the Final Surge platform is um, to use. Um, it's easy to create the reports that I was wanting, and I'll show you those reports here in a second. Um, it, communicating with athletes is big. Uh, I don't know how you are for me. I'm not big on having their phone numbers, and I'm not big on giving them my phone number just because, I mean, I'm younger, um, and when I first started student teaching, I had, I, somehow my number got out, and I came back to my phone with like 80, 80, message, 80 text messages. Um, and so I just don't give my number out to a lot of kids. The only kids on the team out that will have it are the captains, but they know they don't give it out to other kids. And so when you think about communicating with athletes, um, final search has an email kind of function built into it where you can send a message that way. And I'll show you that. But then they also have, um, they kids can comment on their run and you can comment back on their run. So like, especially in this time where I can't see my kids. If I see them log a long run, I'll comment and say, good job, or I'll put a thumbs up emoji, something just to let them know, hey, I saw it, and hey, I'm proud of you for doing it. And then they have training calculators built in. Uh, I'm, like I said earlier, I'm a big tin man, big tin man guy, so I use his training calculator, and that's built into Final Surge. I don't really, I don't, I take it upon myself to tell my kids their training paces. I don't tell them to go look up their training paces um, a little, um, I guess a little bit of a control freak in that manner, but I'll post their paces and tell them what their tempo pace is and stuff like that. But that's another nice feature that you can use and say, Hey, you need to go do a 30 minute tempo run and you need to look your pace up and they can type in their previous like two mile time or 5k time and they can get an idea of, of the tempo pace from that. So that's another cool thing. Um, so I'm just, I just took some screenshots just to kind of show you what it looks like from the athlete and coach perspective from the phone, like their phone from the app. And then I'll show you their website and kind of how I use that. So when we're looking here, um, so this is kind of the home screen. Um, so this is the top part of the home screen. I scrolled down to get the bottom part. You can just see the different things. Uh, again, connected apps. There's a message board. I don't use the message board function. Um, I do use the mailbox. Um, I have it set up to where I get a notification every time that they log, they log a run and it's no, it's, it doesn't buzz or my phone doesn't ring or anything, but it just pops up. Like when you have a text message, like a little notification. So our mileage logs are due uh, Saturday night. So they know Sunday I'm going to check them. I, I've woken up before Sunday morning with like 95 or a hundred notifications from final surge where they were logging miles. Um, so that's just kind of what you see here. When you go here, this is what this is what they'll see. So let's say that you're you're using Final Search. You can you can write a training calendar so you can put your athletes all in the same team, and you can write one calendar, and then it will send out to every person on that team. So if you have 50 kids, you can just type in one thing, boom, and it sends it to all of them. So if you're sending all the training out through Final Surge, it's gonna kind of look like this. Um, it'll pop up, so Monday's highlighted. This is what they need to do on Monday. Um, if I had entered training here, you'd have seen a dot, a gray dot here, and they could have clicked on it, and they can see um, what they're supposed to do. And you can, and I'll show you this when we go, and you can type in whatever you want there, and um, that's where they can kind of see that, um, what you've assigned for them. And then they can click here once they're done and they can go put the details in of their run. And then the cool, one cool thing about final surge is let's say you tell them they need to go run 10 miles. And if they run 10 miles, it turns a certain color. If they don't run 10, if they run less than 10 miles or more than 10 miles, it, the color will change. So you can get a visual of just how did they go over? Did they go under or did they run exactly what I assigned them to do? When you look, so when you go back here, if you look here, the, so the way they can manually enter it, they can just press this plus sign. So this is what most of my kids do. I don't send the workouts out through Final Surge. 
Uh, it's just easier for me to post on our website and I'll kind of, I'll show you that, but they can go click the plus sign here. Once they click the plus sign, this is, I mean, this is everything that they see. And so when they go here, they can do activity type, they can name it, they can put a description. I, mean, I have one kid on my team. He puts a description every single time. Ran at Lost Mountain Park, ran for this long, ran at Hillgrove, ran here, ran, I mean, he does it every single time. Um, and so time of day they can put, order of day. So if you're, they're doing doubles, it can be their second run of the day. They can put that. Um, go in here, distance, duration. So my kids know that I want to know how far you went and I want to know how long. So when I look at that, so I have some kids that they'll just say, like on a workout day. So if we're doing um, a workout they may get eight miles in that day and they may, they'll go rough estimate of how much time they were running. They know for me, that's fine. So, and I, and so if I look at that, let's say a Friday workout, I know exactly what they did on that workout day when I'm checking their mileage again. Um, so that's what they will do. They can mark it as a race. They can tell you how good they felt when I have a number of my kids do that, which is cool just to see like, Hey, you had a good, like a great run um, or a good run, long run workout, whatever it might be their perceived effort. And you can just kind of see the different things um, here. The, the one thing though that is really cool that I really like is these pain and injury reports. And so when they click, so when they click on pain and injury report, it's kind of cool. So they'll do front, back and on, and on their foot. They can press the different places that they felt pain on their run. They can put the level of pain, the duration and the trend. So I have some kids, I don't know why, but they're like deathly afraid of me and they're intimidated. So they're too afraid to come and talk to me. And so I have some, I have some good female coaches that are a lot nicer than me and not as blunt. And so the kids will go talk to them and they'll talk to me in terms of injuries and stuff. But some kids, you know, the super shy kids, they'll, lo they'll log a pain report. I mean, kids who have, you know, they won't talk much at practice, but they'll, they'll be the first ones to log a pain report. And it's nice because you can catch shin splints or some knee or foot pain you can catch any of that pretty early and so i like to tell my kids if two or three days off now is better than two or three months off later and with a lot of our kids at least i know the ones i deal with they're very dedicated um in in school but also that translates in training and so they don't want to take time off so then they don't want to tell me they're in pain because they know i'm going to lessen what they're doing or we're going to change things so this is cool because it get one you have a log so if a kid has shin splints, like, or if they end up with a stress fracture, hopefully they're logging their pain. You can go back and track it. You can go back and check on it and see um, just when, it's, when did it start. And, you know, you have that, that data to, to, to refer back to. And then again, here, how bad is it? Um, I have a girl. I had to kind of talk to her because she would log every single little pain. Like it was every single run she was logging a pain report and she was saying it was on a pain level of 10 and yet she was running every single day, hitting her mileage. And so just kind of talking with her about, hey, we need to, you know, if your stomach hurts because you ate 30 minutes before you run, like that's a little bit different than us having shin pain or things like that. So this is one of the cool things I like about Final Surge. Um, when I get a notification, a lot of times I'll just say, uh, it, it shows me they logged a run, but if I see, it'll say like so-and-so logged a pain report, like I'll always look at that pain report and see what it is. And then you can comment back to them and you can get a little more information or you can remind them to talk to you at practice or something like that. So from a coaching perspective, um, so this is just kind of what the notifications look like. Again, commented on the workout or they updated their workout or if they do log a pain report, you may see like uh, Will Irvin log created a pain report and then you can click on it and it takes you to their pain report and you, you can go and see that um from there and so you you get these notifications which are good and then if they do send you an email a notification would pop up here this i just i, I tweaked that first slide this is i was just showing you some of the apps that they work with and so um i'm not big on cell phones at practice i don't like them on their phones at practice and so like if you have kids tracking their mileage with their phone for me that would be fine so I think Strava or Map My Run might have like that live track with your phone. But again, a lot of my kids have Garmin watches. And so I try to, I mean, they track their mileage that way or they, they sync their account. So that, that's just kind of showing you some of the apps that Final Search kind of pairs with. 
Um, this is just to give you an idea of what the kind of communication looks like. Um, they can change a picture. This, there's only a few kids that put pictures. This girl loves chocolate chip cookies. So you see her pictures, chocolate chip cookies. Um, so again, this is, this is recently. Um, so this is when we've been out and I haven't been able to be with them. She just needed no pace for long run. Um, and you know, this, this, the this girl, she, it's nice because her Garmin account is linked. So when she asks for pace on long run, she says, I, I was looking at my old runs. And I noticed my recovery runs and long runs are all the same pace. I can go back to her log and I can look at those because she syncs her Garmin account and I, and I can verify what her splits were. And so I went back to her last week's long run and it was perfect. So I'm just saying that was a good one. Keep with it. This girl right here. So when I'm checking on Sundays, I check their logs. Well, if they don't log, they get a message from me. And so she only logged like three days of the week and she's one who's more dedicated. So I was like, okay, something's up. Either you're injured or sick or something, or you forgot. And so you see she forgot um, or her Garmin didn't transfer it. So she went and logged it. And then um, this girl, she logged a, she put a comment, like something about running through puddles that I didn't understand. So that's why I just said, huh? And then she explained it. So it just gives you very quick, um, you know, you can have conversations. Again, you can make them positive and encourage them when you can't be with them. If they're doing what they need to be doing, you can say, you know, great job. It's just an easy way to let you know that you're, you see what they're doing. Um, so I'm going to go. Go now, I'm going to go now and show you um, just kind of the final surge website. Just so you can kind of see it. The one a cool thing about final surge is though, and I think I think Tim might be on here and he can um, answer questions that I can't answer. But um, I was looking up the pricing. And so you look at this, the pricing here. Um, when I looked at our pricing, our pricing is not that expensive, but then I think if you go down here, they have a special rate for high school, um, coaches. And the cool thing is they'll do a 14 day trial, but I know, I remember when I was trying final surge out, I didn't get like, I just didn't, I didn't have enough time in those 14 days to full experiment. So I just reached out to them and they extended my coaching trial another like 14 days or something. Um, so I, they were super flexible with me. They answered any questions I had, but then they extended the trial. So I, I think I had like a whole month of playing around with it. And then we finally um, purchased it. So again, it's something that we purchased, even if I paid that, even if it was 390 a year, I'd probably still pay it just because it's a huge, I think it's a huge, um, um, thing for us. Um, Hey Jonathan, I just, I just put the link there. It's hey, yeah. com slash schools. Perfect. Yeah. And so, you know, follow that. But again, it's, I think at least for us, it's something that, that we use a lot. So I'll just kind of show you. And I mentioned, I think on the last call I mentioned just kind of what I was looking for is I wanted a way to track mileage over different time intervals. And like, so when you look at like the summer training graphic, like I wanted to be able to track the mileage over the summer and then, then looking at it each week. And so final surge is pretty easy. So all I do is I go athlete workout report and I throw all my kids into Hillgrove XC and like, you can sit here and like, you can pick a date. So like, let's say if I like, so on this past Sunday, I would pick, so our, our week goes from Sunday to Saturday. So I would have picked Sunday and went straight to Saturday. Um, activity type, some of my kids do some cross training. So I just leave it as all. And then I go group by athlete. And so what it does, it's pretty cool. And it just shows you every athlete. And so you can see some of my, some kids only did three days a week, three days you got. And so it's cool. And then like if they're leaving, um, so you can see some kids don't put much in. Um, you can go let's see so this girl this was this is the chocolate chip cookie girl um again you can see she's super super detailed i mean it syncs with garmin and so what you can see here is so she did um mile repeats on monday so we do and we, i can talk with if you're interested later we do um to build our kids up we don't throw them into straight long runs like a, a 60 to 90 minute long run we start every kid off with mile repeats and so um, she did her mile repeats, but you can see paces here. Um, you can go, I mean, you can, so she's very detailed. 
Um, she saves everything and you can see she even will say how she felt on those days. Um, and then if it has comments, I'm trying to go to another kid. Um, So again, you can see some kids are super detailed. So like what I look at, so like I'll look at, and like this is the number I'm looking at so I can see she, that's how many miles she logged. Um, and so like we did our time trials so I can go to her time trial here. And the cool thing is like all her Garmin data is there. I mean, I can even go and see where she ran the time trial. Um, and I can see now what's interesting for me is the elapsed time is 13 minutes but her moving time is five minutes so i question um i question did she actually run that time now um but you know I, i'll give kids the benefit of the doubt but this is just kind of what you see if they are linking it with garmin again you get more data you can see a lot of data again i'm a numbers person so seeing more splits and stuff this is really cool for a long run um, a kid logs their long run, you can go see, did they get faster, did they get slower? And you can kind of talk to them about just different coaching points um, in that regard. And so what you'll see, I'll sit here um, and what I do, so like this kid has, you can see notes, some of my kids leave more notes, but like what I'll do is like, I'll just go here and you can leave them a comment. So I might say, hey, great job this week. Um, enjoy your rest because my kids are now resting to gear up for cross-country training and then he gets that comment he can go see that comment and respond so this was cool for me so every sunday i'll sit here and i will go scroll through this i keep a spreadsheet i'm a huge spreadsheet person so like i have every single kid here and so what i do is i just scroll over here i don't, I don't you guys probably can't see it let me let me go back. Hold on. Let me show you that real quick. So what I'll do is I'll sit here. And so like, I'll just sit and I'll just go through that list and I'll type in the mileage they ran. So I keep, and this is from track. So I have um, their mileage from the whole season. And so then th this is their kind of mileage plan, what I tell them they need to hit per week. And then I can kind of look here and see what did they log. And then this helps me when I look at cross country and summer training so when I look at, um, I mean, like, so if I look at like the, a good score right here, right, she, she averaged about 30. Now what I'll do is I, like, she started off low in the beginning and she's, she was pretty close to 35 um, consistently towards the end of the season. So like, I know for her, for summer training, her goal is going to be 40 miles per week. And so then if you can map a picture of this if you want, but this is kind of what my kids have. They know this, and this is just kind of how I lay out their mileage. So if she's in the 40 mile per week group, she knows that this is roughly the mileage she needs to get each day. Um, and so like they know like Saturdays, so this would be if we're racing on Saturday, this is your mileage, but they know that they swap Friday and Saturday, the weeks we don't have a race because Friday becomes a workout day, Saturday's an easy day. This just, again, gives them a template. They don't have to hit it, but this gives them a template. And so they, just so they can be proactive in their weekly mileage, making sure they're getting close to what um, they need to get to. And so every Sunday um, I'll sit and I will, I'll go through here on final surge and I'll just scroll through and I'll, I'll log their miles and I'll send them all um, an email if they don't, just to try getting them to um, log their miles. And so this is the main thing that I use final surge for uh, is tracking the mileage. Now, if you were to go to the coaching dashboard, um, you can go teams and groups, uh, you can do a team calendar. So for example, like, every kid is in this group. So like if I, I can start typing in workouts here and I can start putting in workouts and once I put them in, in here, it's gonna send it to the kid's calendar. Um, you can make a workout library. Uh, let's see, just run. So like this is a workout library I started building. So if you have like staple stuff that you do, so like easy days or recovery days is something we do every week. So instead of typing the same thing every recovery day, you all you have to do is you can just go here. Um, you can create it. Oh, 
let me go back. You can just create different workouts to add to your library. That way it's, it's a lot easier to add in. So like, um, I can go library and I can go recovery. Oh, you can tell that I don't use this a lot for this function at least. Uh, library. Do I click it there? Uh, we'll, we'll just, uh, we'll go add. So like I can add that there. So then that would be sent out to every single kid. And so they can see that's what they're supposed to do. Um, you can also go here, you can go quick add. And so when you add it, you can put the type. So what type of run it is it a fart Lake Hills, long run, recovery run. You may not use all of these, but they've got a bunch of different options you can choose from. You can name it and then you can put it in a description. So you can, it's nice because you can literally type it in however you want, whatever format you want, whatever terminology you use. So you're not, I know with VDOT, um, I have a couple coaching friends that are, they're actually probably gonna switch from VDOT to Final Surge, but they just felt restricted with the VDOT app and they, had, they, they couldn't do everything they wanted to do. And they like the fact that they can just type the workout and everything out in the box in their terminology and the format they know their athletes are used to seeing. And then, so you can add it in that way as well. So again, if you're using this to send training out when you can't meet with your kids, you can put them into all in the same group, or if you divide them up into like a A, B, and C, or varsity, JV, new kids, whatever, however you divide it up, you can be able to push out training pretty efficiently and pretty quickly um, through that way. So again, that was just, that's another kind of thing. Um, that you could do. So again, you can create your calendar, um, you create your own teams, and then you sit here and you say, well, I want to sign it to Hillgrove XC, or you could say, I want to sign it to Hillgrove Varsity or Hillgrove JV, or I want to sign it to Hillgrove Freshman, whatever, whatever that kind of looks like for you. Um, I know for us, if you go to our website, I, I'm just way more efficient. Um, If you guys can't see our website page, someone just chime in and let me know, but I'm assuming we can. So I'm way more efficient at posting training. Again, it's on our website. You can go and look at it later if you want, but I'm way more efficient posting workouts like this. So I just throw it in Excel. I copy and paste it over. So I give them the workout to do. Um, and then I have all their paces already planned out for them. So these are all their paces that they were supposed to be hitting for the different workouts um, over the break. And so again, all of the paces I just pull from, um, 10 minute, the 10 man's calculator, um, which if you go here, workout calculators, right, you can go to 10 man, um, you can type in the distance in here, but, or if you go to runfastcoach.com, you can access his, um, his calculator there, or again, whatever calculator you use, if you use one of these, or if you use a different calculator, again, it's kind of flexible for how you use it. Um, but that's kind of the, the main things here. Oh, the last thing, just to show you, how do you add athletes in? Um, so you enter them through the email address. The one, I'll tell you, the only, the only problem that I've really ever encountered with Final Surge is I have kids that will go make a Final Surge account with one email, and then the email address they give me is completely different than the one their Final Surge account is linked to. So when you look at that, we never get paired up because they're not giving me the right email. So the key, and I tell my kids, don't make your final surge account until you get an invitation from me. And so how I do it is I just use a, an Excel form or a Google, if you use Google forms, and you can just have the kids put their name and their email address in it. And then you, get, you can just get it, copy and paste it from that spreadsheet, and you can put them right in here. I mean, I've sent 50 to 60 invites all at one time. Um, and so now, I mean, if you, you see, I have so many kids in here, the only kids I ever have to add are new kids. And so I just put it in here and I, I'll add them to Hillgrove XC and I continue and then it sends them a coaching invite. That's important because that's how that you link the final surge account, their athlete account with your coaching platform. So you can see their, their training and stuff. And so that would be, I said that one of the only glitches, it's nothing with final surge, but it's just. The kids, I met a girl, it took us probably three weeks to get it figured out where I finally figured out that she was giving me the wrong email address. Um, so that, I think that's kind of all I got. If you guys want, um, 
I don't know if you want to type questions, if you have questions into the little message box or Tim, I don't know if you had anything you want to just throw in and add um, that I didn't cover, but thank you, Tim, for jumping on. But I know he, you can probably answer some questions if people have them that I might not be able to. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah. And thanks for doing this, Jonathan. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if anyone has questions, just let me know and I'm happy to answer those or um, you can always shoot me an email to Tim at finalsurge.com. And I do, um, I do coaching demos all the time uh, for our high school and, and collegiate coaches who are using the platform. So I'm happy to do those as well. So can teammates see other, see each other's training logs? That'll be a good question for Tim that I'm not a hundred percent sure of. I know they have message boards where you can set up and you guys, they can kind of post stuff back and forth, but I don't know what it looks like in terms of seeing each other's training logs. Yeah, so we don't open up training logs between uh, team members for kind of privacy reasons, but we do have um, an internal social wall. So that's basically your own private version of Facebook. And we've got a lot of high schools that like that because it keeps the kids engaged. It helps them motivate each other. So through that social wall, they have the ability to share a workout from that same day. So if they want to share their workout, then the other kids can see it and they can click on it and they can see all the data, the graphs, the charts, and the map of where they ran. And then... Um, Again, it works like Facebook, so they can like they can like the workout. They can um, they can post videos, they can post images, um, and they can just have a lot of fun with each other. So that is um, that's the way that most most kids would share their workouts with the social wall feature. And then, like we, so is that, can you turn off the social wall? I know for us, we don't even use it. So is it that's that something you have to turn on? Or yeah, so you have to enable that. So um, the social wall, the message boards, uh, there's a couple of different things in the coaching account that you can choose to use or not. Um, and if you do turn on the social wall, you can decide what teams in your account have access to it. So, you know, you may have four different teams, you know, girls, boys, JV, varsity, however you want to break them up. And then you can decide who has access to that social wall. And then coaching accounts. Can you have more than one coach? I, I don't know. Would you share the login or can you assign uh, multiple coaches to be able to see everything together? Yep. So with our, um, with our high school discounted package um, on that final slash schools page, uh, we usually give high schools two free assistant coaching accounts. And then basically the head coach can decide what teams those assistant coaches have access to. So under your coaching dashboard, there's a, there's a link called manage coaches and you go in there, you type in your coach's email address and then you decide, you know, this coach has access to my boys varsity. This coach has access to girls JV. However you want to do that. Cool. And um, so for me, how I persuaded kids to be consistent with logging um, I forced them to log. So I didn't do this in cross country. So w over the summer, like I know with most states, it's, it's difficult to make stuff mandatory, right? We can't make conditioning mandatory, at least in Georgia. We can't force them to do things over the summer to be on the team. So I bribe kids. Um, they love t-shirts. So we do t-shirts. Um, we do bag tags. So like, um, I have a website I can share whoever wants it. Um, that does bag tags, um, luggage tags. We, it kind of looks like luggage tags. Or we we have a summer every year. I have a summer training logo designed. Um, if you haven't heard of Fiverr, f i v e r r dot com, um, you can get cheap graphic design stuff. If you go on our Instagram or Twitter account, uh, the the senior twenty twenty um, banner or poster that I had made, I paid somebody twelve dollars on Fiverr to design that. Um, and for me, it was well worth it because, again, it promotes our culture. But we bribe kids with bag tags. We bribe them with summer training T-shirts. So they know, um, and they know from the beginning. Um, if And I used to be a mileage club person, so two, three, four, five hundred 500 mileage club. Now uh, I understand that a freshman coming into the program is going to log mileage different than a senior. And I don't want to make it seem like 500 miles is better than 300 miles. When if I have a freshman coming in and they consistently log 25 miles, 30 miles every single week over the summer, that is just as good for me as a senior who logged 50 miles per week all summer. So I switched a couple of years ago to rewarding them the same way they get the same thing. So I don't do it, but like if you do 500 miles, you get some, you get a Nike dry fit. Whereas if you only do 200, you get an off brand dry fit. Like I don't do anything like that. Any kid who hits the summer mileage qualifications, they get the same exact prize. And then we also do an overnight trip um, in cross country. 
and one of the ways that you qualify you so it's it's you qualify for it um a bunch of different well it's a kind of a tiered system if you attend 75 percent of our summer practices you automatically qualify no matter how fast or how slow you are but if you can't attend 75 percent of the practices then if you consistently log miles and then you run um a, in, in the time trial so what i do in our time trial to be in the season i put the results in order i take out every single kid who came to 75% or more of the practice, I take them out. And so if I know I need to take 24 boys because I need to fill those hotel rooms, I need to fill the charter bus, I need each of those kids to pay. Maybe if I, have, if I had 12 boys who attended 75% of the practices, then I've got 12 boys who didn't attend 75% of their practices that I just pulled from the time trial. Now I'll tell you for my kids, um, I ran into this problem the past couple of years where I've had to take more kids on our overnight trip because I had that many kids coming to summer practice. Um, I, when we have summer practice, I'm, our numbers over the summer, we have at least 38 to 45 kids every single summer practice. And we, we're a team of maybe 65 to 68 kids. So I'm seeing most of my kids. And again, I'm not making it mandatory, but I'm creating opportunities to bribe them. Uh, this past year and tr so when we went cross country last year i didn't require them to log miles but i talked to kind of my top seven to ten kids and i'm like you need to keep logging and then any other kid who wanted to keep logging i kept commenting on their logs and tracking it now we then we, so i kind of shifted because again cross country was the first time we dealt with logging in season and so i kind of like tiered it or stair stepped it for them so when we went to track, one of the requirements to race and track was you had to log miles. And so for us, um, I was only an assistant coach, and so I didn't have control over the meet schedule. So when our head coach was picking meets, we would go to like JV meets where you only get 10 entries per event. And when I have 50 kids running distance track, it gets hard to get kids in races. So one of the things I started doing was if you, can't, if you don't log your miles consistently, you're not racing. And so the first meet rolled around, I probably had eight kids who didn't race that first meet because they didn't log their miles. Now I was nice and I gave them one week. So you miss one week, I send you an email and that's your warning. And then if you miss a second week, then you're not racing. So I, and I, I made it very clear to them. And so now um, it's just something if they want to race that they know they have to do. So kind of persuading kids. I bribe them um, with incentives and you, you know, your kids, you know what they like. Um, my kids like shirts. They like ni anything, anything Nike they'll jump on. Um, and you know what, even ask them, if you don't know, ask them what they want. Um, there's been stuff I've tried to do in the past that they didn't like and they tell me they don't like it. So we never do it again. But when we, when we hit something that I know they like, then we kind of keep, we keep going with that. Um, any more questions in terms of final surge, anything like that? Uh, Dambrella, we use yep. uh, um, Strava. What's, and you said you, uh, have you used Strava before? Mm -hmm. like, I, I was trying to figure out what the biggest differences were between Strava and final surge. I just saw on one of your clips that, or on the slides that you can actually, Strava is one of the things that can actually feed into final surge. Yeah, Tim might be able, I don't know if Tim knows much about Strava. I don't. I know people use it. I don't use Strava. Um, so I don't know what the big difference is between Final Surge and Strava would be. Tim may be able to chime in on that. Yeah. Um, the biggest difference is that with, with our platform, you're actually putting the training on the calendar. So, you know, most of our coaches, they're using the team calendars or they're going into the individual athlete calendars and putting the planned training on there. And then when the athlete completes it, when their Garmin or Strava um, workout uploads to the platform, and completes the plan workout, then you can see plan versus completed and we're able to like color code the workout to see, and you can see how much of the workout they actually plan or actually completed. Um, we've got a color coding system, green, yellow, and red, depending on the percent they've completed. Um, so it, it's, our, our platform is more, it, it's closed. You know, I think if you're using Strava, number one, the kids have to really open it up and kind of make it public so you can see all the workouts. Um, but then you still have no way as a coach to really plan the workouts. You've got to use some other some other form you got to use Google Docs or something. This keeps everything in one place, um, and you can make adjustments on the fly. So a lot, of, most of our coaching functionality is also in our apps. 
So if you're on the go and you know you get a you get a pain and injury notification from a um, from an athlete, you can quickly log into the app, change their workout for the next couple of days. You know if they need some days off, something like that. So um, yeah, it's more of the one-on-one communication where job is just kind of your results, where we are both the planning and the results. Cool. Anybody else? Final surge type of stuff. Um, I'm going to show you um, just like the graphics stuff real quick. I'm not going to sh like show you how to make graphics because that's a little. Um, I don't know how can I. So up here, so just kind of, um, so if we look at Twitter, let me go here real quick. So I don't, if you guys kind of follow us, if you see, um, I posted, so like, do, 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 what were we looking? So like this, this was from our time trial results. So I made this graphic today. Again, this is just more so like, advertising our team and just advertising kids. Um, I think more kids are willing to participate and do things if we publish stuff and put their names on it. Um, so I'll kind of show you where I learned to do that. And then I use a certain platform for that. And then when we look at like this, I use a different, I use a website called Vengage. So Vengage, um, this is kind of the website here. And so what I'll do, I don't, I don't pay for this account. It's a free account. And so I'll just make like, this is our um, summer training graphic. So like if, when I make this next year, all I have to do is put summer training 2020 and I can go back and tweak stuff. The problem is to export it, you have to pay for an account, but one like pro tip or um, I'll preview it. And what I'll do is I'll just take screenshots of this and I'll copy and paste it into paint. So I'll like take a screenshot of this and then I'll go down, I'll take a screenshot of the bottom and I'll put them both into paint and I'll kind of put them together. And then I don't pay for an account, but I, then I still get that. And I save as a JPEG and that way we can post it. Um, so this is just, you can go through here. Um, and when you go through here, it gets a little, if you're like me, I'm not good at this stuff. Um, I'm not good at, you know, making stuff look good and that kind of stuff, but you can find different templates that work and then you just go in and tweak them. Um, when you look at like, uh, when you look at a graphic like this, uh, you know, taking this, I'll give you two resources. So Mason Waters, he's a basketball coach that I ran across on Twitter. And he actually, uh, if you scroll down, he actually has learned how to make graphics for recruiting from just a phone. So it's $25. Um, I got in on it. He ran some deal, um, but it is, I mean, you can see, like, you can just see the different graphics um, that he's made. So, I mean, he's made that, he's made a lot of different graphics, but you can, it's 25 bucks for me. It was well worth it. And that's how, that's how I learned how to make graphics like this. Um, and so I ran across this on Twitter a, an athletic director in our area over in Gwinnett Peachtree Ridge. Um, he, if you Ridge AD or what is it? P Ridge AD. If you go and follow him, he tweeted out just some different YouTube videos. I haven't watched them yet, but they're free, but I'm going to go watch them just to learn more, um, learning how to make different graphics. And so, I mean, he's made like a, a game and you see college, like he's made a game day graphic and one kind of cool graphic that I saw that he made so he took like and this he did the same thing I do I just take colleges like this is USC and I look at what colleges are doing and I try to copy their designs and so he's copied their design here so you know he was just playing around with it making like a game day game day graphic and so that's another way to make graphics I know it's hard for us to kind of make graphics on our own um, or it's it's hard to hire people um, to make those graphics but Mason Waters um, 25 bucks there. And then Peachtree Ridge um, AD, if you go follow him, he has some links to some YouTube videos that walk you through. I, I have like three different apps that I use. Um, one, one app is like a Photoshop app. Um, and it kind of lets you delete uh, 
delete backgrounds out so you can isolate just your kid and you can put and put your kid on a different background and you can do a bunch of different stuff. You can take different layers and merge them together. Um, there's a different app I use for the fonts. And so you're, you're, you're switching through different apps, but if you're looking for kind of that graphic design type of stuff, those are some good resources. Um, uses the app over. Yeah, I saw the app over. I actually just downloaded the app over. Um, I never heard of it and I saw him reference. So I just downloaded that. Um, I use a, the app that I use is called um, Superimpose and then Font Candy. Those are kind of the two main ones that I use. Um, just to, and it, it's, I'll tell you, it's time consuming when you first start um, and you're just learning it. I mean, it, it took me probably, like if you go back to our Instagram or Twitter page at the beginning of cross country season and look at some of the graphics I made, I probably spent like a good three or four hours just making one graphic. So like it's daunting at first, but like once you get the hang of it, it gets quick and you learn shortcuts and you learn different things to do. Um, so those are just kind of, I know it, we mentioned talking about graphics. Um, those are kind of the two main things that I use. Um, and again, Fiverr, I'll show you that real quick. If you haven't heard of Fiverr, um, this, this is where I do all my design work. I don't know who, what you guys use in terms of clothing or gear or anything, but this is what we use. This is what I use. Um, like I'll do your sports graphics. So she made or here, no, she, um, most of the designers are in China or in the middle East. So kind of communicating with them sometimes is hard, but you can pick U.S. designers so they're on the same time schedule. But like they, they do all our designs here. You, and you, they have a bunch of different things and you just send them an idea of what you want and then they go from there and the price, you can pay as much as 100 or 200, 300 bucks, but I, we're on a budget. And so, I mean, again, 12 bucks, um, they made, if you go and look on our Instagram page, the senior one, I literally found a like poster from, I think it was Arkansas's track team. And I attached that as my example. And I was like, this is kind of cool. I like this. And that they kind of modeled their design after it. And so if you have an example they're they're but they're really good. Um, again, you can pay as much as you want to pay, but if you're on a budget for graphic design stuff, that's the kind of resource that we stumbled upon a couple years ago that we use um i use a lot so that's kind of all i've got for you guys if anybody else has any other questions i can answer them if not you guys are good i mean you guys are good to sign off when i kind of hang out until um i guess no one's left um bag tags yes good question let me oh let me think of what it's called um We use, I use, and I use this for a few different things. Um, custom lanyard, uh, dot net. So yeah, so I use them for a few different things. So I actually had these made. So we do a uh, team summer camp in the summer. And so I actually made like, um, Nate, like this. So like we had a name tag, a name plate that we made. So we, um, I, I went on Fiverr. And I had a Fiverr person design our, let me see if I can find it real quick. They designed it for us. Um, and then I just sent it to this company and they made it for us. Let's see. So like, if you look here, so like this was the back. And so like, it was our summer camp last summer. So there's the back you can see. And so all I did was I just sent it to Fiverr and I just sent them this, I made a schedule in Excel and I sent them the schedule and they formatted all of this for us. And then this was the front. And so we went to up to Young Harris um, for our camp. And so if you see, like we put Young Harris campus in the background, we put our logo, we had made a logo for camp. Someone on Fiverr designed the logo for camp. 
and then that we and they put their name there. So that's kind of we made the design on Fiverr, and then I went to custom lanyards and I had the files and I sent it to them. They made the bag tags here, and again, you can pick different sizes, how big, how small you want them. Um, you can choose only front, only back. And so the cool thing about this website is you submit your order. And so like what we were going to do is we were going to do the, we were going to have all the tags printed and then we were going to just put vinyl stickers of their names on. But this, this website, all you have to do is after you submit your order, if you email, they'll tell you who to email, you email them the list of kids names and they'll print all the names on there. It makes it a lot more professional. And then we also had lanyards made for the kids. So we did, they got a lanyard to go. And if you've ever been to a coaching clinic, right, you've probably gotten, I got this, I mean, our coaches clinic does it and USA track and field did it. Um, they gave us a lanyard and they gave us a name badge. And so that's kind of what we did. So we do, we'll use them a few times out the year for camp and then for summer training bag tag there. So this is um, custom lanyard uh, net. That's what we use for the, for the bag tag. I have a lady, um, I have a lady that I use for um, all my design stuff. So I don't use BSN or any other group just because I got ripped off my first year coaching with BSN. Um, I may go back to them because we got a new rep, but I have a lady who of a parent, she's a parent of a former runner. She prints everything for us, um, except this custom lanyard website, they could do it a lot cheaper. And so we went with custom lanyard because they do it a lot cheaper and they're very easy to work with. Um, so you kind of find, find what works. Oh yeah. So 10 man release some summer and off season training plans. Yeah, I was, so I'll tweet it out if I end up setting it up, but I was going to set up some type of zoom call and I was going to coordinate with him and just see if he would jump on. Um, and I'm, I was going to reach out to him and see if like, their group needed a fundraiser or something it was going to like charge coaches like 15 or 20 bucks to jump on the call, but just kind of see if he'd be interested in doing a call with just a quick, just thoughts on what coaches should be thinking about in terms of we now have this like extended summer training period. And so advice on, you know, obviously we don't want our kids taking off the whole month of April, but April, May, June, July, like that's a long time for high school kids to focus on just more easier running and stuff. So uh, be on the lookout on Twitter and stuff. Um, I may, I may host a call and just throw my ideas out there. Um, but I thought he'd be someone I know people are interested in hearing. So I was going to try to coordinate something with, with him, but you know, definitely check out that website. Um, oh, great. His, his podcast, I'll, I'll throw it. I mean, he's done some for final surge and some other ones. Um, and if you follow let's run, he gets a bad rap on let's run. I don't, I don't know why, but like he's for me, at least he's super, super approachable. And he like, I'll text him like my Achilles has been bothering me. And I texted him yesterday asking him about it. And like, he sends back this like long response of like a rehab plan and what I need to do. And you need to ice this many times a day and don't run this many days. And so, and he's, I mean, I was at the beach this past summer and I just texted him a, a, a easy training question. Just, I was brainstorming and I texted him, he ends up calling me and then we talked for like an hour and a half. So he's super, super like willing um, to share uh, and, and give advice and stuff. So yeah, find his podcast. I know final Surge has had him on once or twice, but if they're having him again, you can get a lot of good, a lot of good tidbits there. So again, that's, we model a lot of, a lot of our stuff is kind of modeled similar to some of his, a lot of his training ideas and stuff. So anybody else got any more questions? All right. Well, that's it. Appreciate you guys hanging in there. Hopefully you guys are able to grab a couple tidbits and uh, hopefully we will talk again. Again, if I, if I I'll, I'll look at hosting another one, kind of just talking more so summer training ideas and stuff. So if you're one, if you're interested, just pay attention to Twitter um, and we'll throw it out on there. So if not, it was nice talking to everybody and we'll see you guys sometime later.